So I hope we all go home and change. Okay, and this concept of the love bank. Now, I don't know if you have this ATM machine in your place, but in a bank account, you have to deposit money first before you can draw money out. If you don't deposit money, you cannot take any money out. Now, in a love bank, you deposit love and care and help and listening and support and kindness and gifts. And then you get love, care, help, listening and support. Now, of course, you don't demand that. But when you love, then the other person will love you also. So, it's of course, it's best to start when two persons you know they just start to date and then they just really treat the other person very well and and then after marriage really treat the other person very well every day all the time then then the relationship will be very good it then will be mutual love if the relationship is already sour sometimes it's hard to have healing but still we want to forgive and ask for forgiveness and start to treat the other person nicely and also communicate and say I have learned that uh, a good marriage would be very helpful to both of us and it will make uh, our marriage more enjoyable and we can support each other and then we have more strength uh, more spiritual strength and, and, and our ministry would go better so that we have this commitment so we, we, you can write a sheet of commitment and ask your wife to write one and you to write one. And then combine it together. And then both person will commit to that. You know, write down commitments like what, you know, I will listen to the person, I will love the other person, I will care about her, I will uh, listen to her, I will spend time with her, I will help with housework, things like that. Commitment that will be committed to the marriage. Now I would say this, whatever we are committed to the marriage, then we'll reap the harvest, reap the good things from the marriage. But if we don't invest, if we don't sow, we won't be able to reap. It's the same thing with the relationship with God. We, if we don't love God, if we don't serve God, don't do things to please God, then we don't get the blessings of God. God really He first took action to bless us. And then when we respond, then He'll continue to pour blessings in our life. So for our whole life, when we put effort into loving God and serving God, God will be very happy and bless us more and more. His, His blessing far exceed what we do. And then when we love our spouse, also we'll reap uh, good things in a marriage. And then if we work on ourselves to improve ourselves, work on our, our life, our spiritual life, our, uh, our, our wisdom, our ability to help people, our spiritual gifts and everything, our uh, attitude of serving God and serving other people. When we work on these things, then we will become a, a great person. So for anything in our life, in our treatment of other people, in our relationship with God, it all takes, it all takes effort that we need to put effort into it and then we'll reap good things in our life so I hope we all will follow this and you know this love bank put effort into our life and also into other people's life and love and satisfy your spouse make her feel satisfied Proverbs 5 18 let your fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of your youth so make her be blessed and and uh, rejoice with the wife of your youth that you know that you will rejoice with her that uh, the fountain here represent the wife let your fountain be blessed and rejoice with your wife of your youth that you will rejoice with her actually we can learn to rejoice with people rejoice with your church members now I hope you you would say things like to your church members when you're preaching we say well, we worship God together and God is very happy. You know, when we do anything right according to God's plan, God is very happy. When we give a cup of cold water, God is very happy. So when we all pay attention to worship God, we concentrate on worshiping God and loving God, 
and listening to the sermon, God is very happy. And so we are, then we can be happy. God is happy with you now. And we can be happy with ourselves now. And we can be happy with God. We can be happy with our family. So create an attitude of joy in your family. So that uh, you enjoy ministry. You enjoy the church members. And the church members enjoy you. The whole church rejoices. And then life and ministry will become enjoyable. So, so I hope we start enjoying life in God. Because God enjoys every good thing we do. Every little good things we do for God, God is very happy. That is the nice things about God. That God doesn't look, you know, just, just uh, He doesn't just look at our faults. He looks at our good things. Whenever we do good, He's very happy. Now, when we have faults, then we repent, and then God is very happy. Of course, God sees our shortcomings. But when we repent, then God is very happy. So, I hope that we'll say, every day you say, you know, I praise God now, and God is very happy. I serve God now, and God is very happy. I help people, God is very happy. I'm nice to my wife, and God is very happy. And my wife is very happy too. And when I treat my members very nicely, and they are all very happy, and our church will be filled with joy. Now, some people teach joy with pressure, with the law. You need to be joyful. Don't be. Don't worry. Don't 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 doubt God. Don't just you know worry and fear and and uh, suffer. Uh, you have to rejoice in the Lord. Now that is teaching, teaching joy with pressure that doesn't work but we can say any little thing we do for God God is very happy so when you sit there and pay attention to the sermon God is very happy when you listen to the sermon you God is very happy when you praise God wholeheartedly God is very happy so we can all be very happy and we treat each other nicely and we are joyful and God is happy with us and we can be happy with each other. We can be happy with ourselves. So that is motivating people to rejoice in the Lord with grace. And so in the family too, always show love. Always show kindness. Always show appreciation. And then the family will become better and better. So I hope we all work on that and enjoy life. Now many Christians don't enjoy life. It's Life is just work. All, all the time is work. You know, do the job or do evangelism and take care of the family. It's all job. But we can all say, well, whatever I do for God, I can be very happy and I can enjoy it. Okay, and then to change someone, what is the less efficient way and the more efficient way? The less efficient way is to accuse and yell and bad at that we have bad attitude or nag and does not listen and teach too much just tell what to do what to do now this is not so efficient now what is more efficient we affirm people when they do well we say you're doing well you're doing good and speak gently instead of yelling speak nicely say things that make the other person feel happy and have kindness and gentleness always appreciating people say nice words and listen and respond to people and don't nag, don't, don't keep saying the same thing and care about people, be nice to people think about his needs, what does he need and then I try to help him guide him to analyze, guide him to analyze the situation guide him to think and then ho so he can grow guide him to change, guide him to how to improve and, and grow so this is more efficient, the positive way is more efficient now the Bible has a lot of positive encouragement. You know, when Jesus said, you know, you give a cup of cold water, you by no means lose your reward. And when you lend to people and they don't expect return, you, you know, that God will reward you greatly. And when you do good to people, God will reward you greatly. And when you come to God, God will for sure respond to you. And when we love God, for sure God will give you things that your eyes have not seen, your ears have not heard, and the human mind cannot think of. So the Bible has a lot of encouragement, but people don't use those things. 
they just think about what we have to do, what we have to do. So that's just commence. Okay, excuse me for a moment. Okay, now, what if your family member does not want to change? So what do you do? First, we get inner healing that we say, well, Lord, help me uh, comfort my heart that my family member doesn't want to change and please give me comfort so that I will, uh, so that I would be healed inside, that I won't feel, continue to feel hurts. And then get comfort from God. God, you comfort me, you uh, console me, give me peace. You know, so every day, actually, one way we can have joy is just what I said. I praise God and God is very happy, so I can be happy. So that would give us a lot of joy. I love God and God is very happy, so I can enjoy life. And then three, live in peace and love and no burden. So even though the other person doesn't change, I still find peace in God and I want to love the other person and I have no burden. I don't live under burden. And then four, treat him or her with peace and love even though he doesn't change. We still try to be nice to him or her because that way that uh, one day she could change. And then influence him or her gradually. Gradually, uh, not by force but by good example. Uh, by being nice to her. And then six, have realistic expectation, lower unrealistic uh, expectation. What does that mean? If a person always yells, you don't expect him suddenly change and say things nicely. He doesn't change so quickly. If he changes a little bit, if he doesn't yell, already we can say, well, I'm so happy uh, that uh, your, 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 your voice is so gentle. Now, instead of saying you don't yell, you know, because when we say you don't yell, that means there is a criticism underneath that. It's saying you have been yelling, but today you didn't yell. There is a criticism. But when we say you, today you talk very gently, I really like that. You know, when a person hears that, he has more motivation to change. So I hope that we see that, you know, um, to appreciate people will change people more. And when the person is always you know yelling we don't expect them to change totally but if they change a little bit we'll say it's great to see your voice is so gentle today and then seven pray for wisdom and love to treat him or her so lord give me wisdom how to treat her nicely so learn not to be affected by him or her uh, learn not to expect too much if he improves then we are very happy and we thank him Okay, now, what if the other member doesn't change? So, how to build up the marriage and family and not to be affected by them? Accept the sinfulness of people and not to be affected by them. Jeremiah seventeen nine: The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? So, people are sinful. People have problems. People have weaknesses. So, accept that the spouse is not perfect except the people around us are not perfect so we're not affected by them even though they have shortcomings we're not affected by them so accept that um, that the spouse the family members have shortcomings also accept that we have shortcomings and accept that church members have shortcomings but we, when they improve a little bit we appreciate that if they improve, if they work on something, we appreciate that. We say you're growing. It's wonderful to see you growing. And motivate people to take care of personal problem. So, uh, so motivate people. Uh, this will motivate people to, to uh, take care of our, 
personal problems. In Psalm 37, 7, be still before the Lord and wait patiently. And for him, do not fret when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil. So when people are not doing, you know, they, they are sinning, they are doing things, they are wicked, that we don't, uh, you know, we, we wait before the Lord, we do not uh, fret. That means do not become very agitated, angry, frustrated, but we still be pre peaceful. And, uh, and so number one down below, God has planned great blessings for us. No one can take away his blessings except ourselves. If any, anyone is wicked, it is their problem. If I'm affected by him, I will lose God's blessings. So God has planned great blessings for us. And the person is being angry with me, yelling at me, he cannot take away my blessings. If I don't let him, he, he just yelled at me and I don't take it. Because his words will stay in the air only for a split second and then it will be gone. We don't have to think about the words he said, the negative words he said. We just forget about it. Just let go. Let go and then we can uh, not be affected by them. So that's the key. Don't take what they said, the negative words. Don't take it. Don't eat it. Just don't, don't take it seriously. Don't, uh, uh, don't, listen, uh, don't take it internally. Just forget about it. And then too, if someone is wicked, it's their problem and we don't have to be affected by them. Warning to people who don't take care of their personal problems. So if we don't take care of our problems, then, um, then if we have wrath, if we have anger, you know, if the person is not nice and then we get angry, it will bring more destruction. James 1.19 So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. So if we get angry, if the other person is, uh, is not doing well, uh, or when the other person is angry and then we get angry, then it will bring more destruction. And people, what people say, just stay in the air for a split second. And if there's negative word, it's just garbage. We don't have to take it seriously. Just let it go. F don't think about it. Don't let it stay in the heart. Just let go. Now, some people say, well, that's too hard. Uh, but I tell you, if you take it, it is even harder because it will be painful. But it will say, the person said, you're useless, you didn't do things well, you, you, you disagree with me, you know, whatever they say. We try to say things nicely to them, but we don't take their words, we don't think about it. We turn around and just think about God. Now for me, for, for my whole day, I think about God's goodness. I say, God is good, God is kind. God is nice to me and we love God and God is blessing us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And I praise God. God is very happy. God is smiling and I'm smiling. He's rejoicing over me with singing. 7 I 317. He's rejoicing over me with singing. And I'm rejoicing over God with singing. Hallelujah. So all day long, I think about the good things. Whenever people say any bad things, I just put it down. I just forget it. I just let go, doesn't matter. He cannot take any good things from me. So clear all garbage from people. That uh, how people hurt us and criticize us, we just let go. I don't have to take it. You know, even when people uh, intentionally hurt us, we just let go. Two, how we dislike and despise ourselves. Sometimes our own attitude, we don't like ourselves, we dislike ourselves, we despise ourselves, all this we let go. Sometimes people criticize themselves, they, they, they suffer. Three, how we criticize ourselves and have no hope. Sometimes we say, oh, there's no hope, I cannot do anything well, this is garbage. So don't, don't fill our heart with garbage from people or from ourselves or from the situation. But believe that God will always work on things and do and give us good things and give, up, give us good gifts. And the five step to victory, if your spouse doesn't change, your family members doesn't change. Your church member doesn't change. That, that we want to not to be affected by them and we still work on them, help them. 
to bless them, but not with commandments, uh, not with commanding what to do. Uh, yesterday, one person responded to the questions by commanding, telling the person uh, just to, uh, you know, um, continue to, uh, uh, to, to, to be kind. Now, this is true, you know, it, it's right to be kind, just continue to be kind, to be nice, this is right. But uh, we want to first respond to the needs of people instead of just telling people what to do. Uh, commanding people to change might not be the most effective way. We're telling, we, if we just tell people to change, it's, sometimes it's not going to change things. Okay, five steps to victory. I hope you remember these five key words. Aware that, that we're unhappy because of someone hurting me. Two, is destructive if I stay unhappy. Three, apply biblical principles. What does the Bible tell me to do? Four, pray for forgiveness and strength. Five, choose to obey God. So even when he hurts me, I'll choose not to take it. It doesn't matter. He won't be able to steal from me. He won't be able to hurt me. But many people believe this. This is a false teaching. But many people believe when he yells at me, then I'll yell at him. When he's angry with me, then I'll be angry with me, him. So people think, Okay, they treat me badly, then I'll treat him badly. They think that this is the truth, but this is not the truth. This is from Satan. This is from the world. From God is love our enemies. Even when they're hurting us, we love them, we care about them, we pray for them. And of course, we need to use wisdom, how to handle problematic people. But we still try to treat them nicely, be nice to them. So whenever we have any problem inside, we are aware of that and then it, we believe that it's destructive, number two, and then what does the Bible tell me to do? And pray for forgiveness and strength and then choose not to take the garbage, choose not to eat the garbage. Now, for, there's a simplified three steps to victory. Aware of the problem and then pray and then choose to obey God. Choose not to eat the garbage. Choose to be nice to their person. Okay, now, uh, here uh, the last part to build up relationship with children uh, first we set a good example to our children how we you know in a family that we are nice to each other that you know that when we love the spouse love the children that is a good example to them and we love God and obey God and treat people nicely and manage our thinking and emotions that the parents don't get out of control that because we manage our emotions manage our thinking therefore we don't get emotional we don't get angry and how we use our life so these are good examples to the children and then build up friendship with the children it's not just commanding them to do things so spend time with them as we spend time with the spouse <coughs> listen to the feelings and the needs Ch generally children talks uh, talk a lot and it's a good thing because people naturally want to express themselves. So it's a good thing that we um, that that children would uh, talk to us, that then we listen to them and respond to them. Now sometimes we we don't have time to listen. Then we say, "Okay, I heard what you said. I'll I'll respond to you later because I'm busy doing something." Then we tell the person, "I'm busy doing something." So. Um, so we, uh, instead of saying, don't, don't talk so much, don't talk so much, then the ch children will stop talking to us. Then it will stop the relationship. So listen to their feelings if they're unhappy. When they're unhappy, then we have to put down what we're doing and listen to them and care about them and hug them and feel their feelings. You know, they, they're not mature yet. So feel their feelings, understand the feelings. And then rejoice with them, weep with them, be happy with them. When they're happy about something, be happy with them and avoiding hurting the, the feelings. Colossians 3.21, Fathers, do not provoke your children, lest they become discouraged. So we don't hurt the feelings. When we teach them, we just guide them. You're important, you're precious, you're important, and you want to work on your life so that you become a great person, and you, you become a great person. Every day we say, you're improving, you're improving. And we don't have to make them fear us. They, we don't, you know, 
fearing, if they fear us, then you know, we cannot influence them. If they love us, they want to be with us, then we can influence them. We want them to trust us just as the Heavenly Father helps us to trust Him. So as the Heavenly Father, the Heavenly Father just doesn't just yell at us. He comforts us. He put love and joy into our hearts. So we want to do the same thing with our parents, uh, with our children. And how to communicate with children, treat them with love and respect. Respect them even when they are young. Build up a trusting relationship with them. Do not provoke your children lest they become discouraged. Always give them uh, encouragement, give them support, appreciate their strength and say you are skilled in that, you are doing well in that and guide them to treasure themselves. You are precious, you are important. Guide them to experience God, lay hand on them to experience the Holy Spirit. Then, then they know we can experience God, God can be experienced. Then they know that God is with them and guide them to have hope in life, that there is hope in life, there is future. Guide them to make the best of life, you know, life will go higher. So that is the good way to educate them. So when they understand that, then they, they will grow more and more. Uh, so, so we uh, encourage them by telling them, you are precious and God loves you, I love you, you are very important and when you study well, then God, uh, you will go enter the perfect plan of God, you love God, you enter the perfect plan of God and God will continue to bless you. So we can guide them, guide them and uh, uh, to see that their life is precious. Instead of beating them and hate, saying things, I hate you, I don't like you, you know, uh, you are useless, you are always crying, you know, saying things like that, it's going to hurt them and it's not going to do any, um, any uh, good. Now, should parents and children dine together? Now, Revelation 3.20, Jesus said to us, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. So, Jesus wants to come and eat with us. So, if Jesus wants to eat with us, we should eat with our children and our, our wife. So, dining is a time to communicate. That a time to talk to each other. Dining is a time to build a relationship. Dining is a time of enjoying life together. We enjoy life together. Dining is a time to influence the family, to help them to love God more and love each other more. Dining is a time to talk about issues. So it's good that we spend time with the children. Now what if some friends came, come to visit? Then eat together with the fam uh, friends and the children together. Uh, you know, the children will learn when we talk with our friends. Then, you know, the wife can also participate. But I noticed that when I visit many African homes, uh, when I went there, it's just the father and the uncle there, but the wife and the children will eat in the kitchen. I think this is not a good practice. Okay, so we'll stop here. And if you have any questions, send it to me. And God bless you. And we'll come back in about 10 minutes. God be with you and tell me when you're ready. Okay? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And we ask that God will bless your marriage, help you to have the wisdom to work on your marriage, uh, to build up your marriage. Okay? God be with you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is good to us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm.